talk about uncertainty today. Uh, of course, uncertainty is pervasive in our everyday lives. It um, impacts on how we make decisions. It plays a central role in how markets behave. For instance, <clears throat> investments in human, financial and human capital face uncertain returns. Decisions on whether to engage in new enterprises that face uncertain returns. In my view, lots of uh, economic analyses has treated uncertainty as a second order, consider as a second order consideration. My aim is, and my ambition in a variety of my research is to make it a primary concern and, and not something that we just kind of becomes an afterthought. When we build models in economics and other disciplines, these models are simplifications. These models are abstractions. They're not perfect descriptions of reality or else they wouldn't be very useful as models. In that sense, they're going to be wrong in some ways. Right? So we can imagine that these models, you know, which would, if we knew the model, it would tell us probabilities of all sorts of events in the future, but we know the model's not quite right. Then, to, then the challenge is, is it wrong in important ways or, or is it wrong in inessential ways? On the other hand, it's important to acknowledge the fact these models are, can be misspecified and to and not throw them out, but, the, but then to use them in sensible ways. So when we use models, it may also be wise to use them with some form of skepticism saying, imagining perhaps there's this guy out to cheat you in order to, to make conservative adjustments in, 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 the, in the way that we use models. So I want this to kind of motivate the, an approach to a, a, to a third type of uncertainty, and that is you've got models. The models are approximations. They're not quite right, and we're, but we're not entirely sure of how they might be wrong. If we knew how they were wrong, we, we, we would fix them. So now let me talk about decision theory. And, and, and this has become a very, very rich field within uh, economics recently, uh, but, it's, but, it's, but it's built on some very fundamental contributions. The individual on the left is Frank Knight. He was actually at the university a long time ago, was at the university that I'm at. And he coined this distinction between what he called risk and uncertainty. So risk is a case where we know the probabilities, games of chance. Uh, for him, uncertainty was, was well, we, situations in which we don't necessarily know the probabilities, and suggesting that economic actors might respond to these situations quite differently. The concept of systemic risk was really not very much on the radar screen prior to the financial crisis among economists. If we look at, if, if we look at the uh, discussions in the academic literature, it was, uh, the, the, it was not a subject that, that, that was highly researched. And it's very clear that it's not really fully understand. It's become much more of a, a slogan. It's become a grab bag of scenarios rationalizing interventions in financial markets. There is little doubt that we have, that as economists, we have a limited understanding of what, to, of, of, uh, of, of, of systemic risk. And this really makes it hard to use it as a guiding principle for, for a financial oversight. Now, you shouldn't necessarily just trust me on this. Uh, Andy Haldane, who's in charge of financial market oversight at the Bank of England, has written extensively on this subject, saying, look, you know, just, we're, they're being asked to do things based on very, very limited knowledge or understanding. Trullo, uh, um, um, at the Board of Governors in the, uh, in the, in the, for the Federal Reserve in the United States, has also written sim similarly. So I really think this, calling this systemic risk is a bit problematic given our lack of understanding, and really perhaps what we ought to be discussing is systemic uncertainty. That is, we don't have full understanding of the concept. Uh, there's, there's maybe progress is going to be made over the next, you know, you know, as academics think about this concept more and more going forward. But it means that um, as a very f precise guide for designing um, financial market oversight is problematic. So I really think it's important that we kind of acknowledge this uncertainty and that we go ahead and, and, and that we kind of ex um, uh, embrace its consequences when, when, when you think about the design of, uh, design of policy. So I'm no expert on the uh, Shanghai free trade arrangements, uh, experiments going on. Uh, I'm all in favor of uh, openness and, and, and free trade policy, so its, so its inspiration seems to me right. In fact, it would be great if it got expanded much more broadly to the Chinese economy. But the, on the other hand, once you start looking at the details of it, it's, it's, at least to me, it stop, stops looking to be simple and transparent. And the, and the more complex the implementation is, I think the less, like, yeah, the less effective it's likely to be. 
So again, here is a case where simplicity and transparency be can become incredibly important. <clears throat> if we want to look at kind of uh, uh, the role of banking finance in, in China, there seems to me a, a very important challenge going forward. Uh, that is opening up the uh, uh, banking system to, to uh, private sector competition and uh, to, 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 uh, to the creation of private sector banks that can help us, that can help nourish the investment in new enterprises. And, and, and this can be a potentially a very important, potent policy lever going forward. At the same time, it's important that these private sector alternative, that these private sector banks can, can compete with the uh, government banks on what I would call a level playing field in a way, under rules in which are transparent to everybody. I find it useful to, 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 uh, to think on, uh, about uncertainty very broadly conceived. One is risk, okay? If I'm given a model that tells me all the probabilities of the future, then, that's, then I want to think about that as risk. That's the simplest type of environment one can imagine. It's, it's the extension of the games of chance I talked about earlier. I also want to talk about model ambiguity. Maybe we don't know which is the correct model. Maybe we don't have uh, how much confidence do we place in each of these models, and, 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 and then how do we assess, assess the policy consequences of, of these various different models. Finally, the third one, which is perhaps the most challenging, is model misspecification. The models we use as ac academic economists um, uh, are, are known to be wrong. It's, I mean, the whole nature of a model is some type of simplification or abstraction, so almost by def construction it's wrong. But the question is, how do we use models that are not perfect in sensible and wise ways and not, and not, overstate the, uh, and not have an overstated confidence in their implications? <clears throat> this is a, tremendous, uh, a tremendously important um, problem that, that, sh that, uh, sh that I hope we can make progress on going forward that has ramifications both for how we model individuals as well as how we design prudent policies. Finally, given our limited understanding, complicated problems may be best addressed with simple solutions. This may be sound counterintuitive, but it plays off the fact that our uh, 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 the limits to our understanding. Now, when I talk about simple, let me be very clear about one thing. Bad, uh, simple bad solutions are still going to be bad. It's just the case as, as we're looking through an array of solutions of a, of, a, of a particular type, there may be some appeal to making them simpler, that that will reduce the amount of policy uncertainty and, and reduce the scope for, um, uh, uh, for, <clears throat> for kind of arbitrary policy uh, execution in the future. So um, with this, I want to just drive home this point that I, I hope that all of us can think about uncertainty in much more ambitious and creative ways and that, and, and that filters all the way into our discussions of economic policy analysis. Thank you.